Once again, Finchinator, otherwise known as the Tracy Morgan of Smogan, and his OU Council cohorts have colluded to ruin your OU metagame experience. They have teased the possibility of Cinderace coming back to OU, but they have never had any intention of letting that actually happen. They just wanted to crush you. They wanted to crush your spirit. They wanted you to think that we might be able to break away from this metagame and have fun using Cinderace, but that was never going to happen. They want the metagame to be stalled. They want you to burn and suffer and scream and choke and cry under the weight of Toxapex and Clefable and Blissey, and I'm just kidding. None of that is true. Well, parts of it might be, but I have no way of knowing which. So I will say right away that I do think Cinderace actually needs to get banned, and in this video I will go over why. So there's a suspect thread on the Smogan forums and the overuse thing, the thing I'm showing on the screen right now. And you can go there for more discussion. Various players have input their input. Uh, I among them, actually. But yeah, I got the voting requirements, so I'll be voting on Cinderace, and I will be voting ban. And I hope that enough people vote ban alongside me to keep Cinderace out of the tier. So uh, I first got into Sword and Shield, quote-unquote, with the Magirna suspect test. I didn't really get into it, but I just felt like playing, and I did. So I voted ban on Magirna, and I think that was the right call, and it did get banned. And back then I thought Cinderace was broken. I have a video on the Magirna Cinderace metagame, because I specify Cinderace alongside Magirna, even though Magirna was the one getting tested, because everyone wanted Cinderace tested or banned at the time too, and I agreed with that sentiment because I thought Cinderace was busted now, and, but we're giving it a fair shake because Cinderace was quick banned, and now we are testing it in a metagame without Magirna, so a metagame without Magirna means it's not as difficult to stave off constant offensive threats because Specs Magirna was insanely busted, but now uh, with no Magirna, I still think Cinderace is broken and we will get into why. So I wrote up a short post thinking, or not thinking, summarizing my thoughts, and uh, so if you wanna read that, then it's in this thread. So let's go over the set Cinderace uses. If you are not using this set, then you are probably missing out, because as always, uh, widely, publicized suspect test like this in a metagame as big as OU is going to have a lot of less experienced players chiming in and like in this thread then there are people going oh come on look you can handle choice ban Cinderace and you, know, you gotta use boots on Cinderace no matter what so now that we have that out of the way uh, this set is really really dumb because even if you have one of the few Pokemon that check it then it just U turns out into something else, another big hitter like Choice Ban Rillaboom or Specs Analytic Magnazone, and it just keeps piling it on. And even if it gets uh, chipped by, let's say, a Rocky Helmet from Hippowdon or Toxapex, then Choice Ban Rillaboom is also good because Grassy Terrain heals Cinderace. But the reason it's so dumb is because it's, first of all, it's really strong because it has a great attack stat and stab on everything, and yes, you should be using Adamant because its speed tier is just that good. And uh, the power boost does make a big difference. So first of all, Adamant, and it's got stab on everything, which makes it even more nuts. And uh, even if you can stave it off, it just sticks around the entire game because of Boots. And some people have thought, look, Boots are the problem here. Cinderace would not be anything without Boots. And Boots are dumb on other Pokemon like Zero Aura too. But then obviously Volcarona and Rotom Heat and other annoying Pokemon. And I'm not opposed to that. I don't like Boots myself, but right now it's about Cinderace, and under the current circumstances, I think Cinderace is dumb because it sticks around all game, and even if you do have one of the few Pokemon that wall it, then you are just going to get you turned on, and another Breaker comes in, and you are constantly on the defensive until you just collapse under all the constant pressure. Now, I think that it's just too good a Pokemon to be allowed because people complain about the very defensive metagame, uh, the defensive state of the current OU metagame, but Cinderace does not do anything to help that. Matter of fact, I think it makes it even worse because you cannot out-offense Cinderace and you are forced to go not just bulky, but very specifically bulky because 
even something as bulky as Toxapex uh, does not handle Cinderace because of Zen Headbutt. And some people have said, look, Rocky Helmet Toxapex with Baneful Bunker, then no matter what, you punish Cinderace. First of all, you get Zen Headbutt on the switch, even Max Defense gets two at KO'd. And they can either, if your plan is to Baneful Bunker, they can either switch out, you're getting chipped, you're regenerating it off, it's not going to be easy to do that again. Or they can just Pyro Ball, predicting your Baneful Bunker, which does not trigger the poison because it's not contact. And then you are in trouble again. So really, there's not enough Pokemon that really stay this Pokemon off. It's really just Hippowdon and Rhyperior. And that's a pretty, like, for this set at least, because, you know, nothing else really used in OU is going to be able to switch into this safely. And, you know, against Hippowdon and Rhyperior, you just U-turn out. And Rhyperior especially because it doesn't have slack off like Hippo does and has to rely on leftovers, so Cinderace isn't even getting chipped by Rocky Helmet like uh, with Hippo. And you can't run Hippo or Rhyperior on every team, not to mention they're not even perfect counters. Now this set is the best set, but it's not the only thing Cinderace can do. Uh, I faced a couple sets with Bulk Up and High Jump Kick, so now you can't even do stuff like Roost Stall it with Mandibuzz, and Hippowdon can't even check it anymore because plus one high jump kick two it KOs, and you're switching over to a, a move way stronger than Pyro Ball, and uh, or not way stronger but stronger in high jump kick with uh, which has 130 base power, and it makes you not a fire type. So with the defense boost and no longer being weak to earthquake, Hippowdon doesn't even threaten you uh, in return, and you similarly destroy Rhyperior. So. This one set is too much for OU, but the fact is that Cinderace can make things even worse for the limited pool of checks it has very easily. So, uh, it all, you also can't out-offense Cinderace because it's very naturally fast, even with an adamant nature. And, you know, talk about dipping into that move pool, it has Sucker Punch, which hits the, po the few Pokemon faster really hard. So let's look at what those might be. Uh, first of all, it's great in a mirror against other... So let me just show the sets. It's great in a Cinderace mirror if it comes down to it. It's great for saving you against low health Volcarona. And uh, I think this is the good bulk up set because... Oh yeah, plus one Zen Headbutt just absolutely destroys Toxapex. And you really don't want a Baneful Bunker against it because it can just bulk up again. So yikes. Uh, so that would be this set. And then I personally, when I was running Cinderace, both in the Magirna test and the... I used Cinderace every game for the Magirna test in the beginning of the Cinderace test. And I didn't like Zen headbutting Toxapex on the Switch because I felt I didn't want to you know, take the helmet damage. I felt I would rather just U-turn out to something else threatening. That was my preference. But I, uh, I did face a lot of Zen headbutt Cinderace while using Toxapex because I switched teams from this team that Finch gave me over to a uh, an edited version of ABR's stall team and I just put Baneful Bunker on Toxapex because I was afraid of Cinderace and it was still a massive pain so yeah I started out with this and I'll go through the replays as I keep talking but I just wanted to show the sets so yeah I personally really like Sucker Punch and we're gonna go through the faster Pokemon so Alakazam drops obviously and yeah if you're going to say stuff like, oh, well, you can run Focus Sash Zam and, you know, uh, you can predict the Sucker Punch with Nasty Plot, you're missing the point entirely. And not every, I think Zam not running Life Orb is kind of a waste. Nasty Plot, Life Orb, Zam is, you know, what it does. You know, running Focus Sash just so you don't die to Cinderace is a symptom of Cinderace being ridiculous. So, uh, Dragapult gets dropped, of course. Now, you're gonna want to watch out for Thunder Wave because a lot of Dragapult run that, but it's still a useful weapon to have against it. And if the Dragapult is running, t is planning on T-Waving instead of attacking, that makes it easier to switch around. Gengar drops uh, Hawlucha. Okay, ha it's not very good against Hawlucha, but Hawlucha is not that good, so. I faced a lot of Hawlucha and never really did much. But yeah, it's, uh, so I guess you win. Hawlucha is a good check to it, but Hawlucha is not a great Pokemon overall, so. Uh, what else is faster? 
not a lot because T Cinderace is really fast. And oh, you also uh, sucker punch against uh, weakened Urshifu. I think that came up once for me. So you don't get sucker punched by regular Urshifu or aqua jetted by water Urshifu. Oh, and Zera Aura. I mean, you think, oh, come on, Zera Aura? But yeah, it does half to Zera Aura. So uh, around half, it's like 45 to 54 or something. So being able to pick Zera Aura off like that when a lot of teams rely on getting the momentum back with Zera Aura is r invaluable. Makes it even tougher to play around. And that's the whole thing. Cinderace is tough enough to deal with with one set, but then its move pool is so nasty that it can easily make itself even more difficult to deal with. And we're not even getting into court change. The fact that a move as good as court change does not get used on Cinderace speaks to just how ridiculously powerful it is. So, I'm sure if we kept it around, then we would see more court change being used. But, yeah, so those are the sets. Now I'm just going to... Uh, keep talking about the metagame while I show the replays that I had while suspect testing. I'm, I doubt we get through all 41 of them because that would mean we would be here a while and I don't think I need that long to get my point across. But yeah, I really uh, th dislike what Cinderace does for the metagame. Let me just fix these dimensions and we will be on our way. So... Uh, I'm not in the minority here, I don't think. I think a lot of good players, like Finchinator himself, is very anti-Cinderace, and I think it's hard to really make an argument for it. Uh, one of the few that I did see was the whole... Uh, we see more Pokemon come out of the woodworks to try and check it, like Arcanine and Rotom... What was that post? Let me find it. And I just... Uh, let's see, it was pretty early on, I think. So yeah, there's a banned Cinderace post. Here's a uh, yeah. Here's someone saying we need to ban the boots. Uh, banned. Here's a conspiracy theory post from the top brass in this post, which is of course ridiculous. Uh, as for DLC two, I don't know about testing Cinderace in DLC two because. Depending on what gets released, then you could also just say, what about testing Dracovish and Melmetal and Magirna? And I'm not opposed to that. You know, I don't know about dropping all four back in at once, but I think uh, I'm not opposed to retesting stuff after it was, uh, after DLC 2 comes out. So, no ban, yeah. Yeah, the, a lot of these posts are just not very competitively minded because... Look, if you are taking the metagame as a com as a unit of competition, which you should be, because that's the purpose of tiering, then it should not be, well, this metagame is boring. The problem, it's more if the metagame, if you really can't use more than very, very little without being worse off for it. And I don't think current Sword and Shield is like that at all. So... And if your problem, it doesn't even work because even if you want, if you want to check Cinderace, you have to go bulky. There is no other way of handling it. So, like, uh, look at look at these some of these checks. Like Slowbro, Slowbro's not a check. You know how much U-turn stab U-turn does the Slowbro because Cinderace has stab on everything, and getting stab on U-turn without any of the downfalls of U-turn well, of being a bug type is really really great. Well, even if it was a bug type, it has boots, but you get the point. It has... It's too strong. Like, you see Scarf Urshifus and stuff, so you take away what makes Urshifu so threatening just to check Cinderace? I, I don't know. I'm not liking it. So, yeah, the solution to Toxapex, Blissey, Toxapex, Clef, Corviknight is to just add more fat Pokemon to deal with Cinderace. I don't know. I'm not buying it, especially when, like, Rotom Wash is also definitely not even close to a Cinderace check. So... Uh, yeah, Cinderace is not going to make the metagame less fat. It's going to make the metagame more fat. I think, yeah, it's very tough to break out of the fat mold in current Sword and Shield, but you, you know, so, I don't know. I think there are a lot of people who have had success without necessarily resorting to ultra stallish stuff, and Cinderace hinders that more than it helps just because of how difficult it is to deal with defensively. And honestly, I think I've already made most of my point, which is kind of nice. 
but there's uh, I think I'm just going to be repeating my points once or twice more so this is a low ladder game I think this one was more interesting oh yeah so uh, oh wait this one has a Durant yeah so I remember this Cinderace was one of the bulk up ones and I had to do something ridiculous like uh, I had to yeah see look he bulked up and now I can't roost stall it anymore with Mandibuzz and, yeah, I'd check it with Crawdon, which was not great. And, uh, yeah, see, look, I, and if he uh, bulks up, then he uh, beats my Cinderace, so I I think I messed up because I wanted him to, I wanted to teleport to Rhyperior or something. But, yeah, um, I just Moonblasted there on the bulk up, and this is not really the point of this video, because Ladder is weird. Oh, this was another OUTI player. So, yeah, it, look, let's say uh, this, let's say Cinderace is paired with something like a banded Rillaboom, then Cinderace U-turns out of Rhyperior, and in comes Rillaboom, and it U-turns out of Mandibuzz, and you just keep going over and over and over, you bring in your Zara Aura, also Zara Aura is really nasty alongside Cinderace because you think, alright, well my Rhyperior slash a Powdown will also check the Zara Aura, and then it Grass Knots, and uh-oh, Cinderace runs me over, so... Uh, it's, I think it's way too easy to bypass Cinderace's regular pool of checks, both within its own move pool and with other Pokemon, because it's so specific in what is actually a check to it. It's just too fast, it's too strong for how fast it is. Like, something like Dragapult is really fast, but it's not that powerful. And, I don't, maybe the problem is Boots. It really might be, because Cinderace would not be anywhere near as good as it is without Boots. But as far as I'm aware, then Boots is currently not on the table, and uh, Cinderace is far and away the best abuser of them. I mean, it's crazy to think that even non-Stealth Rock weak Pokemon like Zeraora and Dragapult are using the hell out of Boots, and just using their Switch moves all day long. And... That's the kind of metagame we're in, and I think that balance is fine with the Rillabooms and the, uh, what, not Magirnas, Magnazones and whatnot, so you've got your offensive switch moves. See, there's another bulk up Cinderace, and here's an ad, so. Uh, yeah, so I think I barely lives high jump kick, but not long. Oh, he was using bulk up U-turn. Imagine if that was actually high jump kick. I would have been in trouble, especially if he bulked up again. Yikes. So... Uh, yeah, the point being that, yeah, I think the dynamic of strong, breaking Pokemon having switch moves is a, is something that is just going to be the case in Sword and Shield, especially when accentuated by stuff like, uh, what's it called? Teleport Clefable, like Teleport Slowbro and stuff, and Blissey. I think that's just a natural part of it, but I think, like Magirna, Cinderace is too powerful a Pokemon to exist in that kind of meta. So, you know, like he, here he switches around my Zen headbutt, but he doesn't, he doesn't know I don't have it, so I just have, I just keep, uh, keep up the pressure because Cinderace's U-turn is so riskless. Even Rocky Helmet barely staves it off, especially with stuff like Wishport Clef. So, I mean, the more I say all this stuff, the more I really realize just how much I dislike boots as an item. But right now, it's not really the the thing. So, uh, yeah, it's just too difficult to handle. Also, Sucker Punch is awesome in every situation. And Gunk Shot just... Oh, it would have dropped Clef if that didn't happen. But, yeah, there's just... The fact it has Gunk Shot makes it just crazy. Because now even bulky stuff like Togekiss and Clefable... Well, Clefable would die to plus one Pyro... Or not take plus one Pyro Ball, but still. Doesn't even give it an option. So... I, I think most of my points are made already. I think I've covered the basics and there's no real need to keep going, so... Uh, we'll just go through the thread and see any of the arguments after this game is done. Look, another game where that bulk up thing happened. I mean, this is low ladder, so I'll just... Let's see what my last game was. This was the game I used to... Yeah, I, st I switched over to this team after a while, so it doesn't make for very fun viewing. No Cinder... Oh, there is a Cinderace over there. Scolope is actually a pain, but yeah. Ditto is amazing. Yeah, so Bunker, and then I 
I had to do dumb stuff like, uh, let, let's just go back to this. So uh, he didn't expect my uh, my bunker, and now I have to, you know, because I, I can't switch around it. Even though it's poisoned and at low HP, I can't switch other things into the pyro ball, and I think it's just it constricts team building. It makes playing against it stupid. There's just everything is wrong with Cinderace. Really, just everything. So. You know, I had to make a stupid stay in there. I mean, I could afford to because Toxpex wasn't really too needed, but imagine if he had something that was going to rely on Toxpex for, so... Uh, yeah, this is the game, my final game for voting requirements, I think. Yeah, I think so. So, oh yeah, let's just go through the rest of the thread. Yeah, here's, uh, let's, uh, fix the dimensions so you can see more. Deserves to be banned. Yeah, the overwhelming majority is, is uh, pro ban posts, which is encouraging. And again, we can bring it back, but for now, you know, maybe Cinderace will be more fit to the metagame in the future, but yeah, he, this is a good post by Mr. Hans. He says, uh, I think it's funny you say Cinderace should be legal in this meta because there's too many fat games, then you go on to talk about how the best way to handle it is by adding fat stuff to your team that Cinderace can't beat, so. Yeah, this, uh, Mr. Han summed it up very nicely. Uh, pro ban. Yeah, team. Oh, let's see what, uh, Subject 18 used to... Shooting Star Me, sorry. <laughs> used to, yeah, see Cinderace. Oh, Jolly Cinderace to get the jump on other Cinderace. That's really the only reason. I guess if you're really afraid of, like, Gengar and... Maybe Hawlucha, although Hawlucha's getting speed boost. Does this even beat Hawlucha? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it does, but, you know, still. And, uh, look, Cinderace plus Rillaboom. So so even if you're chipping at it with uh, Rocky Helmet, then whoops, it gets grassy terrain. So, oh, look, he has a Hawlucha on this team, actually. Yeah, I think I faced uh, this Mew set. It was very popular. So, uh, yes, Cinderace is pretty busted, I think. Yeah, IPF using this team was what inspired me to use it as well. After the initial, I figured it was safer than the uh, initial team that I was using from Finch. So thank you to both those guys. But yeah, uh, Cinderace is strong. It's fast, and you know, the posts here you can read them at your leisure. And if you wanna, if people are talking about checking uh, or unbanning or retesting Mel Metal, which I have never played a good game with Mel Metal. I have no idea, but I'm okay with the idea. So, Mel, uh, yeah. so lots of prediction reliant. Yeah, I don't really. Okay, this post is very clearly. It's not. See this. Uh, this argument that Dice Five Four Nine is making is grounded and inexperienced, because the idea is not that Cinder is versatile and unpredictable, because it has the one set that puts it over the edge, and the fact that it easily can switch up its move pool to make it even worse to deal with is just cherry on top, so... Yeah, okay, this post is just saying... This is on par with people in black and white saying Blaziken dies to Aqua Jet. It's not, uh, ban-worthy, so... Okay, this poster is saying that Cinderace should should not be running heavy duty boots and just run wide lens instead. Yeah, so this is the same idea as that other post, which is too fat, but Cinderace just makes things more fat. So and it's broken. So the bottom line should always be: is the Pokemon broken? Yes or no? Uh, in current gen tiering, that's how it functions. So. Yeah, so these, uh, this is just, well, I can outplay Cinderace, so it's not broken. Well, you know, you can outplay anything. You could play out, you could outplay Genesect in OU. Didn't make Genesect not broken. So, you can't switch into, you can't switch the faster Pokemon into Cinderace, and those faster Pokemon can lose to Sucker Punch, in a nutshell. So, yeah, this is a great Finch. Yeah, the metagame seems to be changing all the time. I don't think it's exactly stale. So, 
Finch uh, is all over it as usual. I think he probably has a video on this. If he doesn't now, I'm sure he will, but go check out his channel. I did a collab with him recently. It was about black and white, but it was still awesome. So, yeah, there are some people who are saying ban Libero, which, you know, I don't really mind. If you want to do that, then fine, but I will leave the specifics of bans to other players, to those who are actually active in the policy scene. I wouldn't be opposed, but if it's a choice between Libero Cinderace... If it's a choice between having Cinderace in OU entirely and not having Cinderace in OU at all, but I will... Uh, what's it called? I will uh, take Cinderace as a whole being banned every time. Sorry, trying to read and say things at the same time. So yeah, I think we've covered most everything. So... Uh, yeah, so here's... Finch discussing this. So Finch uh, has it covered even better than I do, but I just wanted to make this video because I enjoyed taking a couple hours out of a day to get the voting requirements, and I look forward to Cinderace no longer being an OU. I don't really play Sword and Shield, but okay, goodbye, Ad. We can we're wrapping up, so we can turn the music off. But yeah, I look forward to it uh, not being an OU, because although I don't really play Sword and Shield, I look forward to the big tournament, SPL, where my players will be playing it. And, well, I guess the metagame will be different by then, by DLC. But either way, I think uh, it's fun to participate in this stuff, remind myself of my glory days. And I do think that is the right opinion to get rid of Cinderace. So, yeah, look, another ban, and... Uh, Pendulum Swing here espouses on why you turning and Volt Switching back and forth a gajillion times with Heavy Duty Boots is already dumb, but with Cinderace they just become way too powerful. So there's my post, which is clearly incredible. And yeah, so that's everything. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you are inspired to get out there, get the voting requirements. Uh, those voting requirements are here. And uh, vote ban on Cinderace. That's what I'm sending my minions out to do. Although you probably don't need me telling you to do so, because I think most informed players are of the same opinion. So, uh, the voting requirements are... What is it? Yeah, here. Uh, GXC of 80 with 50 games played minimum. You can play one less game if you have 0.2 GXC, you have above 80. So, for example, my GXC was 82.3, which meant that... I needed 39 games minimum, and I had 41, so that was it. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, ban Cinderace, and I will see you next time.